Good morning. Good morning. It is Tuesday. So it's Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are excited to be back again for another episode. So today we are celebrating National Pet Day, and we are making a little pet bed. I'm very excited about doing this. We have a couple of little techniques that we're going to go into while making this um, that I'll show you. It'll be kind of fun to use for other projects, but today we'll make the pet bed. You'll learn lots. It'll be great. Um, before we get too far into it, want to make sure that we tell you about the giveaway. So if you share the video, you'll be entered to win. So share it to your favorite sewing groups or, you know, your friend who sews to somebody who has a pet that, you know, you think you might want to make it for them. All that kind of good stuff. And at the end, we will choose two winners. So one from Facebook and one from YouTube. And we will give away a kit along with the Sew Together Tuesday tote bag and mug. So Hawk will go over and show you the a, fun stuff that you'll win. A kit hiding little, in there. Yep. Some tip sheets, some patterns, some fun stuff, as well as the tote bag and mug. So just say thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing. So at the end, we'll pick two winners. So you have to um, share it and then we'll pick a winner from there. And you don't have to necessarily tell us that you shared it because we can see if you share it. Um, if, as long as you're sharing it through Facebook. So if you're on YouTube, you can share it and then tell us. Okay. All right. Is that All what right. I have to tell him? I always try to remember. And like, seriously, I think I'm like, oh, yeah, I got this. And then I always question it. I'm like, did I, did I get everything? I'm That's getting, a lot. I'm pretty good <clears throat> at it now. Like, I feel like, you know, being in the studio, it's helping me. Like, I'm just chill. So, <laughs> so to do, today we're doing the pet bed. Um, like I said, it's National Pet Day. We have some pictures that we wanted to throw up there and show you guys that is the um, a conglomeration of pets that are both from the Shannon Fabrics people and from our local um, our neighbor. Yeah. yeah. So one of our neighbors, we made the little pet bed that I've got in front of me. We took a picture and then I'll explain it a little bit. Shout, shout out the old timer Riley down there in the bottom. That's center. right. He's a, so. he's a million years old, um, <laughs> but he's doing great. He is. So anyway, so today we're going to talk about pets, how much you love them and how they need a soft and comfy cuddle bed too. All right, so that's what we're doing. I've made a few of them. The pattern that we're going to, um, that we have, you can find it on the blog. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you should be able to download the pattern. I would suggest that you do that. The pattern instructions, so it looks like this. Let's just talk about the pattern for a second here. Okay, so the pattern's going to look like this. This is also our neighborhood dog because we don't have a pet. Stout. Hi, Stout. Shout out to Java Garage that keeps us caffeinated in the morning. <laughs> That's right. And they have a nice big dog. <laughs> so I made the um, large version for the dog. So this is the big version. This is the medium version here that I've got my tiny little teddy bear on. Okay. Um, so this is the medium version. And then we're going to actually make the small version today. So you'll be able to see kind of all three sizes, depending on what size of pet you have, whether you have a cat or a big dog, you're gonna want different sizes. So we've got all of those sizes are included in here in this little sidebar. You can get all the measurements for the different pet bed sizes, but the construction is all the same. So that's what I kind of want to reiterate is that the sizes, you can make this whatever size you want to, it's fine. The techniques are gonna be the same and I'll explain as we go how we got those measurements and why they're that way, okay? All right. All right. Okay. So we can start then, right? Let's do it. We can make a bed now? Let's okay. do it. Y'all got your pattern. Go print it out. Then we can go forward. Um, again, we're doing show notes every week. So the show notes will be tomorrow. And you can find those on that same blog post. So you go to the shannonfabrics.com slash blog. You'll be able to find show notes that will talk about some of the things that I share today so that you can have easy access to reference those. There will also be a link in the description on the YouTube channel show correct yes so there will be a quick link on youtube as well and i recommend that if you are interested in making the project at all that you grab those show notes afterward because i will we kind of include all of the extra bits of information that you might want to reference later when you make it and we've been doing that every show this season and we'll keep doing that so i think that they're going to be a really good reference material for you in doing some cuddle projects okay so and the pattern is available now the pattern should, should be, be available, available now. It should be available now. It was it was posted up on the the uh, the website this morning, and it should be live. It should be. So if it's not, it will be soon. Okay. All right. So let's go over the ingredients first. So let's throw that um, little screen up there with what we need to do or what we need to get to make this bed. So the the amount of fabric that's in here is for the medium size bed. 
All right. So if you want to make a bigger bed, you're going to need to get like a yard of fabric and a half yard. So make sure that you got enough fabric. It's also a really great one if you've got some extra um, bits of fabric from other projects, just larger bits. Okay. So you're going to need three quarters of a yard of Lux Cuddle, three eighths of a yard of Cuddle three. So you can make that whatever you want. We'll talk a little bit more about fabric choices. You also want a rotary cutter, craft knife, 9014 stretch needle, polyester sewing thread, flower head pins, a 20 inch zipper, basting tape. And today I'm using a new product from By Annie, thin polyester batting, basting spray, polyester filling, which is just stuffing, and anti-skid gripper fabric, which is optional if you want to add that to your pet bed. Okay, so once you've got all the fabric and you've got your pattern, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out all the pieces. So all the pieces on this are just rectangles that are included. The sizes are included in the pattern. So I was lucky enough to have Hawk <laughs> prepare the fabric for me. He cut it all out. We have a little video to show you how you do this. Okay, so just measure everything out. Draw it with a pen. Vacuum it as you go. You're going to be okay. You're going to get through all of it. Make sure that you measure everything carefully. So one of the things with Cuddle is that we do want to measure and mark everything before we cut it. So it's really important because it is easy to mismeasure and accidentally cut it wrong. The coffee so. helps. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's the sped up version. How long do you think that took you actually to cut it out, Hawk? Probably about 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Not even 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not very long. So it's a quick and easy little cutout, but make sure that you're actually cutting it. Um, yeah, and then cleaning up all the mess as you go. Mark it, cut it, clean up your mess, and then you'll be able to put it together. So the... Um, this, this fabric or this project, we actually cut it all out with the rotary cutter because we wanted to just have nice sharp edges. You could do it with the craft knife to have the soft edges. Sometimes I pick and choose which one I want to do. And this one, it was just quick and easy to cut it out with the rotary cutter. And all so, these edges are going to be in the seam allowances. They're in the seam allowances. So, so it's not right. really a big deal if you give them a haircut. Exactly. I didn't really, yeah, I didn't care if it was nice and soft on the edges anymore. Okay. So then we got everything cut out. Let me put this guy on another little bed back there. So we got everything mm -hmm. cut. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna sew it onto a piece of batting. Okay, so once you've got your pieces cut, you're gonna have your top and your bottom piece. In the pattern, it says that you can, if you buy three eighths of a yard of fabric, you will have two pieces that are about this wide, the whole thing across, okay? So you're just gonna, you're gonna have two pieces that you're gonna stick together. If you have more fabric, you can have one piece. That information is in the pattern, what size you're gonna cut out, but you're gonna have a top and a bottom the exact same size. You could have pieced the bottom or you can have one solid piece, all right? We got one solid piece today. Got it, and that's, that's where the C3 chocolate. This is the C3 chocolate. Yep, so we're gonna put a cuddle three on the bottom. Cuddle three, if you remember, is the smooth stuff, the flat stuff, the regular old minky that people are familiar with. Three, three millimeter, millimeter lap. now. Okay, so that's what's on the bottom. So we've got a bottom. I've got a top already ready. I'll show you how I did this. Basically, I just stuck the um, the piece on here. I spray basted it on, and I zigzagged it down. Okay. All right. So that's what I zigzag. did. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. turn it over so you can see. There's just the big zigzag, just right along the edges. The reason we put it on the batting is to give it a little extra stability. So on the top and the bottom have a batting backing on it to give it a little bit of extra oomph. Okay, so that batting will help to give it more stability. So with this one, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it out of my rotary so, cutter. OD505 spray, based, spray basted it to the batting, zigzagged it, and now you're going to trim the extra I am. batting. And I have to open up my new 6x24 ruler. Oh, yeah? Yeah, let's do this. This is my quilter select. I can find that little edge to get it to pull up. There we go. Oh, we get a little bonus unboxing. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I love these rulers. So one of the things I really like about these Quilter Select is that they have this, uh, it's anti-glare too, which is nice. You can't really see the glare so much <laughs> from this side. Um, but truthfully, this is the anti-slip side. So if I turn this over, so we're going we're gonna to show, if I put it on here, Always it doesn't, it will, it won't, it won't move on it, which is fabulous. Gosh. So you can see if I put it this way, like a normal ruler is, it'll, well, my fingers don't, slip, but it will slide. Got it. Okay. So if I do it this way with the anti-grip stuff, cannot move it or okay. anti-slip stuff. Yeah. It's totally pro-grip. It's pro-grip anti-slip. Okay. 
<laughs> Those <laughs> words ought not to rhyme. They shouldn't. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut this out right along the edges. Now, I will tell you, I've made this bed a few times now because that's what happens. I have to practice. And sometimes you're going to cut the zigzag right off and the, the stitches will be loose on the edge again. And that's totally fine. It's holding it down enough. We don't really care if it isn't, you know, perfectly sewn on. It's going to get sewn into the, into the seam. Got it. It's almost like a base. You're almost using the zigzag like a basting stitch. Yeah, right? it's kind of just basting the the uh, batting onto it just to hold it there for us. Okay. I kind of held on to some of the, the mess from earlier. That was good. All right. So throw the batting scraps away. And now I've got my bottom piece and I've got my top piece. Okay, so I already did this with the top piece. And I've got my batting on here. Now, if you remember, when we talk about batting, we always talk, people ask, you have to quilt it only if you use batting. So we use batting, which means we have to adhere it somehow to this. So we did a few little, no, I did it on the other one. I did some tacking stitches. So we're going to do it on here. And I'm just going to do some little tacks on there. So again, when you have batting, you follow the, manu the batting manufacturers. Exactly. So usually it's like eight to 10 inches that you need to do it. So I'm just going to do kind of some little ones on here. I'll show you how easy it is and that it doesn't have to be quilting per se. So we're going to actually kind of pretend this is the old school like tie quilt. We're just going to put a little bit of zigzag. So what I did is I came and I got a narrow um, zigzag that you would kind of use for satin stitching, but I'm just going to shrink it even more. So it's just tiny. All right, so if you look on the picture, it's a, it's, it would be a it's really a, nice satin stitch, gosh, basically. Gosh, it's almost a satin stitch. Got it. So I'm just going to stick it on here, and I'm just going to do some zigzags really quick here. And then cut that. I'm going to make sure that it works, because I don't think it did. Nope. Helps. Okay, I know I... Hold on, because I know I, I redid my bobbin yesterday. I knew it didn't work because the thread didn't stay up top, and that's always what happens. I was like, wait, I don't think it's working. Okay. Oh, I'm threaded. Put my needle down, put my needle up. There's my there's my bobbin thread. Let's try it again. Okay, stick it in here. So this is pretty random, this placement. What? Other than, oh, it's totally random. Yeah, totally yeah. random. It's going to get hidden in the nap. You're never going to see it, but it's going to do its job. Okay, there we go. Yay. Okay. Let me see if I can get it to pull the right one. Okay, there's two threads. One of them is the. <gasps> what happened? I did, it got pulled wrong. I did it wrong. I pulled the wrong one. <laughs> I don't understand. It just, I did it so. <laughs> so I'm going to do it more. Okay. I'm going to go over here. I'm not going to pull the back thread. All right. Okay. So I'm just going to stick another one in here. It's funny. I did this a bunch of times yesterday. Never had that happen. Of course, because we're live. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just sticking some on here because it needs to be attached down every once in a while. You could do like a little X stitch or you could do, um, I was like, oh, I could do like the little round um, buttonhole thing like eyelets that you could do. You could do all sorts of fun little things on there if you wanted to, but honestly, it's totally fine as it is. And you're never gonna see it. You're never gonna see it. I'm just gonna trim that Boink. there. Boink. Okay, so I can trim that now. The magic of cuddle is that we're just gonna, we're gonna fluff those up. And you'll never see those little spots again, okay? So there you go. So now you've got it tacked. So like I said, you could do like a little X. You could actually do like a little tie with embroidery thread if you wanted to. You can do a little zigzag, do whatever you want. You could quilt the whole thing if you wanted to. Doesn't matter. You just need to attach it somehow. The reason is because when you throw this in the wash, that batting will kind of detach and will wear faster and get holes in it if it isn't actually attached to the fabric. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do is get that so that it is washable. So we did it on the top. We add a few little tacking stitches. Now on the bottom, I'm not going to because I'm going to stick some slipper gripper stuff on here. 
All right. So I have a big hunk on here. I'm going to cut a little bit smaller piece. I'm going to cut this in half and put it in the middle. This is anti-skid gripper fabric. Yeah. Tongue twister. It's sort of like presser foot pressure. Um, it takes a while <laughs> to learn how to say it. So, <laughs> so I'm going to say it really slowly all day. Anti-skid gripper fabric. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this a little bit smaller. In the pattern, it says you can use a couple of, um, I think, an eight by eight piece, four by eight. You don't have to use a lot and you don't actually have to use it at all. But if you don't, you should probably put some little tacking stitches at the bottom too. Okay. Wait, you put some little tacking stitches in the bottom too. Oh, oh, Here. okay. Got On the it. cuddle. Mm -hmm. When you apply this, it's going to it's also gonna quilt, it. quilt the make a little sandwich so that the batting is secured. Okay. Exactly. Got it. Okay. I'm slow. It's all right. It's all right. So I've got my thing here. If you want to be careful, you could totally measure it. That's not really how I work. So I'm just going to slap it on there somewhere. But I've got my little overspray paper. Okay. And my 505 spray. Oh, did we go over the ingredients? We did. We did. Okay. I was like, wait a second. I got ahead of myself, but I didn't. You didn't. So this is the OD505. This is the stuff I like for basting. This is what I use to baste the backing on or the batting onto the fabric as well. So we're going to use it on here to get the anti-skid gripper fabric onto the cuddle. So the edges of this will fray. We're going to stitch it down a couple of times so it'll be just fine. So put a little coating of that on here. Now I'll move that out of the way, put this where I want it. So one of the things that I really like about the Odif is that I can just totally pick it up. I can put it down. It'll start to stick. I can lift it up. So you can, you can kind of futz with the positioning for a while until you get it right. I'll give it a little pat down. The cuddle smack down. That's right. And at this point, it's just going to stay there. I don't need to pin it or anything. The OD, the 505 spray really does make it just kind of stay there while I'm sewing it. Um, I'm going to say that and it's probably, I, it's probably going to move on me now, but I haven't had to pin it yet. So, which is nice because pinning that stuff is actually kind of hard because it's got all those little bits of stuff in it. So I've got it on, here we go. So it's a four by four zigzag. So what I'm going to use, and I'm going to go around this thing. Let me actually switch out the foot. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this one off and put this on here. So you guys can see a little bit better. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zigzag around this whole thing and I'm going to try to get my right hand, like the zag or whatever, to come off on this side just onto the cuddle three, kind of like when we do binding where we come just off the edge to just secure that edge much better. So I can see where my needle's going to come down. I can push my foot, make it go down. And I can see that's going to work out just fine. Okay, so I'm just going to stitch all the way around this. Do we have a recommendation on where to get the anti-skid gripper fabric? That uh, some wanna, stores that carry it, about? but honestly, it's, it's probably a chain store. Some, some quilt shops have it. I would look around and see what you can find. Also, bug your local quilt shop and ask them to order it. That yes, is, it, is, it, it is possible for your quilt shop to have it. It absolutely is. I have it on the bolt. Um, we got it from E.E. E. Shank on the bolt. So the store can get it that way too. Yeah, which is nice. I think. Okay. And I'm going to go around this twice. Because this is going to get a little bit of wear, and that big zigzag is, you know, pretty big. So I'm just going to go all the way around it two times to secure it nice and tight. When you uh, use the spray based, uh, do you put it on? Do you normally put it on the batting or the cuddle? I put it on the cuddle. Put it on the cuddle, and then lay it onto the batting, and that's the way that it works best for me because it doesn't soak into the back of the cuddle at all, where it is on the batting, it will actually soak into the batting a little bit and kind of not be as sticky because it's not right on top. So does that make sense? It does. Okay. So again, I'm just going to go around this real quick twice just to get it to be real tight on here. What I like is that it kind of, even though I've zigzagged it all the way around and I can actually see the zigzags if I look closely, 
you can't really see them very well at all. It kind of just mushes right in. And I'm just using black thread. So we talked about um, the thread and the needle when we were going through the ingredients. And I'm going to reiterate that it's really important to be using the right thread and needles. You want to be making, make sure that you're using a polyester thread when you're working with puddle because it's much less likely to break. And then also we've got the 90-40-14 stretch needle. So even though here I'm sewing through cuddle and you know, a different kind of fabric, I still want to use that. It's going to help keep my stitches nice and consistent and not skip any stitches, which especially in something like this, when you skip stitches, it makes your, it doesn't adhere because you didn't get all the stitches. So see, I can't even tell where I started. Yep, I'm back to the beginning. Okay. So I've stitched <laughs> around it twice. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little lock stitch here at the end. And cut my thread. Okay, so if I flip this over, you'll see that now I've, I've quilted it enough, right? That this is all within 10 inches of each other, that it's not going to, it's not going to tear apart. And then what this does is makes it so that when the dog gets on here, it doesn't slide. So unlike Cuddle 3, which wants to slide on everything, the gripper doesn't move. Got okay? it. Okay. So as long as I've got some weight on here, I really can't pull it. It's just kind of stuck there. So if you have a dog that, you know, you don't want sliding around on the floor, this is a great way to do it. I did talk to one of our brand ambassadors, Rachel, I think it was, and she was telling me that her dog loves it when it jumps on the bed and slides across the floor. So I'm saying well, don't you don't have to do time. it. Right, exactly. <laughs> she may love doing that, and that's okay. All right, so there's my, there's the bottom. Here's the top. We've got those set aside. All right. And then we're going to do the band. We're going to start the band with the zipper, which is the part that always kind of scares people and makes them think that you can't do it with cuddle. And you can. I'm going to show you a couple things that make it a little bit easier. All right. So let me get my stuff for the band. So in the pattern, it tells you to cut out uh, zipper bands, which is the back part of it where we're going to put the zipper. So that's what I've got here. And then some end caps, which are going to go on the end and make it the right length. So whenever you're making this for um, whatever size you're making it, you're going to have bands, side bands is what we call them in the pattern, that are the length that this is cut. Okay, so whatever size this is, that's how big your side band is going to be. However big this is, you're going to have a side band for that. So we're going to make this band right now, and it's a zipper band. We're using two zipper bands, putting a zipper in the middle, and the end caps. And I'll show you how that all goes together. All right. So I tried this a couple of different ways yesterday. I think it was I was trying out the zippers and I was trying to figure out the best way to show you guys how to do this. So there's a couple of different ways. I did find some things that were a little bit more frustrating, things that didn't work quite as well. So one of the things is that the, just the standard, the standard zipper is kind of what you want. So this is a 20 inch zipper that I got and it is narrower than some of the other zippers that I found. So I've, I had a bunch of zippers in my stash that were like purse zippers or for zip totes, that sort of thing. And they were wider. And that was a little bit harder. So I went and just got well, a regular old zipper. By wider, you mean like the fabric the, the on zipper the tape was side wider. Of the zipper was, okay, got it. Was actually All almost a quarter of an inch wider, which made it a little bit harder to put together. So I will recommend that you just get the regular old zipper. And if you can get a zipper by the yard, and then you can do any size you want. Um, and if, you, if it's wider, you just have to position it a little differently. But... Um, we're going to do it this way. So the way that we're going to put the zipper in is pretty normal for how you put a zipper in, except we get to skip a couple of steps because it's cuddle, which makes it a little easier, actually. Okay, so we're going to have one step at the beginning that is optional, but did work very nicely, and that was that I surged the edges. Okay. Which you could also probably just do what with a zigzag. You could do well, with a zigzag, right? and I would probably do it with one big zigzag to kind of get it down there, and then I would go back with a narrower zigzag and smash it all down. So that's the thing is that this gives me a nice little area to put my basting tape on to make it easier. When I tried to use the basting tape without doing the surging, it just kind of floats on top of this and doesn't really stay in place because if you put it up on top of here, this moves a bunch. <laughs> and so it wasn't staying where I wanted it to. So I decided to do it this way. I did find, too, that if you are a surging person, you have a serger, I found that it was, it gave me a better stitch on this side when I surged it, cuddle side, or the fluff side down. So I put it in the machine like this. Okay. 
and then I surged it. And no cutting with the surgery. That's not what you're doing. No, no you blade. don't. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mine, the blade on mine, the one I have right now is my backup machine and it's a little harder to take out. So I did make some fur mess. So you can do it. Like it won't matter really if your scissors are, up or your knife is up or down, it just makes more mess. And then I have to clean it more mess. So that's why I usually put the, put the blade down, but Got it. I'm still missing a machine. No, because I'm not super familiar with you like, installing zippers. In my mind, this is like what you would do to like keep all this fluff from getting in the teeth. But that's not actually that's, what that's for, is it? It's not what it's for. It's really okay. just for easier placement. So we're going to use the uh, a new product from By Annie today called the um, the By Annie double sided basting tape. And she came out with this. I don't know, maybe a month ago or so. She was nice enough to send me some to try out. And I have to say, I was really impressed. So this one is a little bit narrower than some of the other ones. So this one is an eighth inch instead of a quarter inch. We're not trying to do a direct comparison here, but you often use Wonder wonder Tape. Yeah, Wonder Tape is usually this, what I use. Right? And yeah, and they have a washable kind and it works really well. But I'm really impressed with this because it is stickier. So if stickier is what you want, this is great. If you need wider or less sticky or washout, the Wonder Tape works for that. So they are, they are slightly different. And I always think it's good to know kind of what one, one has versus the other one, because there are def definitely different reasons why you're going to use different products. So this is the by Annie tape, and I'm actually going to put this onto my zipper. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just stick it kind of in the middle. And I'm going to start here and just put it right along the edge. Okay, so we're putting it right along the edge of the, the fabric. Uh, yes, of okay. the, the zipper tape part. Got it. Now, if you had the, if you already had zippers in your stash and they were wider than this, you would just move the tape in towards the teeth. A so little that bit it's more. about a half an inch from the teeth. There exactly. That's the that's the thing is the wider ones. It when I put the the tape on out at the edge, and that would be something too because this is eighth inch tape. It doesn't have a lot of a wide part. So I was putting it. It had to be past the area that it really needed to be. Because um, mm. this was out here, but the fabric wanted to stop here. So, Got it. Um, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to smash it down with my finger. And again, this tape does not wash out. Not that I know of. Okay. Yeah. And and in this particular application, it doesn't need to at all. Let me see on here. If it tells me anything about. Yeah, it doesn't look like it washes out. So, but it's an eighth of an inch wide. It's very narrow. So it's going to hide in most anything. So some sometimes with the quarter inch, I like the washable because I'm going to be able to see it because it's wider than what I'm putting down. So this one is narrow enough that I'm pretty sure I can hide it in most everything. Was when you surge the edges up there, was that a three stitch or a, a, a four, four four thread? Four thread. There we go. It was a four thread. You could absolutely use a three thread. Now, I thought about taking out that fourth thread, but I'm lazy, so I left it there. <laughs> it does no good because it's not securing anything to it. It's really just getting another thread on there. Right, which in, in this case is mostly designed to just kind of hold the nap down out of the way. Exactly. And give this tape something to stick to. It gives the tape some place to stick to. That's really what it is. So I've got my, my tape ready, my zipper tape ready, okay? The what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this kind of like we do a normal zipper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to base these together along this long edge. So if you are familiar with putting in a zipper, this is pretty consistent with what we're going to do. Okay. I'm just going to put these together. Pin them every once in a while and see how this works. If I have to stop and do more pinning, I will. Okay. What what is this crazy pinning behavior? What is this okay? So 40, I'm kind of pinning five degrees, <laughs> so not I'm... parallel, okay. not double pinning. You're confusing me. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> sometimes this is how I pin when I want to be faster, and it is it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but the 45 will actually help hold it better. So let me show you. If I do this, this still has a lot of movement right here. Okay, so this the fabric will kind of get out of out of sorts. It's a lot easier to get these to not work right. Okay. But when it's here, it's harder to get it to be out of sorts. I can't really do it so much. So it holds down a wider portion of the fabric without actually double pinning. Okay. So for something like this, it's not super important that it stays exactly where I want it to be. 
you'll see I'll pin lots of other parts here with double pins. Okay, so now we're going to sew this with a half inch seam allowance because everything we do is with a half inch, well, almost everything we do is with a half inch seam allowance. All right, and I'm going to put my, this foot back on here just because it holds the fabric down a little bit better. But this is just the basting stitch. This is just a basting stitch. Yep. Okay. I just found that when I use this, so the open toe foot, I really love because one, it lets you guys see what I'm doing. So you can see in this, you know, the front a lot better, but what, also what it does is when I'm stitching here, sometimes this fabric will get caught up around. So sometimes sewing seams with that foot is not the best. Okay. So I'm going to sew it at a half inch. I stick my foot down. So normally if we were sewing with cotton, a 3.5 would be a basting stitch, but we're going to up it up to a four because we're with cuddle. We want to take it out really nice and easy. So I'm just going to go along this whole thing to keep it nice and straight as it comes in here. And just let it work through. But, so, and you didn't lock stitch it at the beginning. I did not because we just want to take it out. I have definitely done that before. It's not the wisest choice. Okay. No back stitching, no lock stitches, just, no extra. Just a half an inch. And again, I'm sewing with the, I'm not sure if I told you, with the baby lock chorus today. Chorus? Is the right name? It is. Okay. Yeah. All of a sudden I questioned myself. Um, <laughs> so that's what I'm sewing with today with the digital dual feed foot, which is kind of the equivalent of a walking foot, but better in my opinion, much better. And uh, this works really well with the cuddle fabric. So I've got my half inch seam allowance. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to kind of finger press this down. So this is very similar to kind of how you would do a zipper. And actually, just in case you never knew, there are instructions on how to put a zipper in, in your zipper. <laughs> so we're kind of doing this the centered application or a lapped but like we're not going to do all the fancy stuff here so that's why i just threw it away you want to put it in <laughs> cotton read the instructions but today we're not going to okay so now i've got my my seam done with a half inch seam allowance i've got my zipper ready to go with the tape and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to take off one of the ends now, is this the stage of zippering where you have to be really careful so that the zipper doesn't come off? Or, no. Or is this? No, that's only when you have a zipper that doesn't have a metal end on it. If you're doing the zipper by the yard, you have to be careful. This one has show you a metal end. Oh, it has the stopper so it already off. on there. Okay. Yes. We had that. We had that incident a couple years ago. It's not good. The zipper flinging show. Yes. yes. <laughs> There's only been one. <laughs> it was not a good moment. <laughs> <laughs> the ends are not supposed to come off. The zipper pull is not supposed to come off. Okay, so I'm just pressing this down, just getting it right along the edge. The nice thing about that surging is you can see it's really flat and it just sits on there beautifully. Got it. Okay, so I go ahead and stick that on there. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna sew this and then we'll come back and do the other side. You could do both at the same time. I always worry that one of my tapes gonna come off and I don't want that to happen. So I'm actually going to switch it if I can remember where I put my foot. Here it is. Bonus foot. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this thing off. So the digital dual feed plugs in. And there's a whole big thing. So I have to switch it to get my zipper foot on. Let me get that on there as I can. All right. They do have a little um, little piece that's also somewhere because I've been using it um, to help you tighten it. Little screwdriver part. So the zipper foot I want to show you because the zipper foot is weird. And a lot of people are like, I don't know what that is. Let me put it down there. So the zipper foot is funky and it lets you sew on either side of it. So depending on where you click it into your machine, you'll be able to sew on one side or the other. So when you're putting zippers in, you might need it on one side or the other. I'm going to put it back on this side. Oh, come on. If you don't have a serger, you should just be able to use a big zigzag uh, yep. to, to do to almost acts like a knockdown stitch for the nap along that kind of, it's edge. Just, it's just going to smash it. And that's what we want is we just want it to smash. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and unzip this a little bit. So we can work around that zipper pull. I will say one of the things that um, 
I learned a long time ago, actually, let me show this here, um, was if you move the, the pole, it's a lot easier to sew around it. I used to try to like work my way around that and it's really difficult. So I'm gonna show you how to not do that. Let me switch my stitch length down to a three because we actually want this to adhere. And I'm just gonna sew this along the quarter inch. So it's about a quarter inch away from the edge there. So just pick a pick a space on yours, make sure it works. So the key with doing this is I stitch this little bit of the zipper. I've gotten to where the pull is. So now I'm gonna put my foot up and the pull the zipper. Up. The needle's still down. The needle is still down, which is why it's a little bit tricky. So now I can actually get it up here and I can see like, does that work? Yes, it works against the Lux Cuddle. Great, okay, perfect, I can keep going. So it's a little test to make sure that you're not too close because that can definitely, definitely happen. What did I do? There we go, okay. So now we're just gonna stitch the rest of the way just at a quarter of an inch. Okay. And yeah, if you have any questions about it, zippers in Cuddle are definitely one of the things that people often think you can't do. You absolutely can. We've put them in a few of them. Some pillow cases, mm -hmm. other pillow cases. That's certainly a thing. I remember yep. that. I don't know. Um, have we added zippers to a, a, a jacket or anything yet? Um, I don't know that we have, but we did do it on a zipper bag once when we did oh, yeah. a show with Sheila from Designs by Baby Moon. Oh, then yeah. she we did a little zipper in a zip to or a zip pouch. That was in the hoop, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, zipper even in the, in hoop. the hoop. Okay, so again, we're going to take the tape off. Okay, and I'm going to flip this so that I am going to put this against the smash down surged part here. I'm just going to kind of pull it, make sure that it's it's going to fit nice. Okay, and I'm not tugging too much, but I do want to make sure that it's staying in the same place as the other edge did. So, and I did notice that the surging will want to kind of squish it. I don't know what the right word is there pulls it in a little bit. So sometimes I have to kind of give it a little tug to make it lay out flat. Okay, there we go, again. That tape seems like it's really doing its job. It really does a great job. I was super impressed with it. Yeah, it sticks very nicely. So again, we're just gonna sew along here, quarter inch. And I'm not back stitching because we're gonna go over that spot. So we're gonna secure it. Oh, fine. did we do a zipper and a scarf too when we did, oh, we the, did. the infinity scarf with the with the, the hidden pocket? That's right, we did. Nice we did. work, we... Mary. Thanks. Yep. So we've done it a few times. All Ms. right. Sheila this might this might do, be my mess. Do do the zipper and the hoop with the embroidery <laughs> machine all day versus doing this. <laughs> <Yeah>. Got it. <laughs> okay. I push my Sheila. Zipper I think down. we need a video about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay so again I push my little zipper pull down and that leaves me an open spot and now I can get past it so one of the things that I have um that I've done so we have just oh it didn't even it didn't really move at all but if you try to do it with your zipper pull around this the foot has to work around this so you'll get like a break around that so make sure that you're moving your zipper pull out of the way all right so now this is the part that always used to confuse me because now I'm like, how do I get to my zipper? <laughs> and we're just going to have to pop our way out that one. Okay. So for me on here, it was easier for me to take out these stitches than to take them out from the front. Oh, yeah. Trying to find those down in the nab of the cuddle sounds... Is a lot harder like than I want it to be. a haystack conversation. Exactly. So I can take it out of here. I can kind of grab it. I've just got my little stiletto that I love so much. Thank you, by Annie. Oops. Okay, we can kind of tug this because we've done a nice big stitch. We can just take it right out. There's all my thread. Let me get rid of that. That was pretty simple, right? That was great. Okay, so now we have a zipper. I hit something. There we go. All right, so the zipper works. That's great. All right, so now we're going to sew these onto the little 
end caps, basically. So what they are. So make sure that this is right. They should match. So I'm going to make them match because that's what we do. So we're going to pin one at this corner and one at this corner. And depending on what fabric you're using, you want your nap to match. We're using the Lux Cuddle Heather, which has a nap, but it is really hard to tell which way it's going. So you can see I wrote on them as I went to try to make sure that I could keep the naps in the right direction, but it's not. It's Lux Cuddle Heather Quartz is yes. this fabric. And then what I'm doing back here is just trying to make sure that my zipper comes together. So I might actually move that slightly. So pin it on this side. And then I want to make sure that this zipper meets over here. Somebody watched one of our videos this morning where you were mm -hmm. also installing a zipper, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I do remember this. You did not have a zipper foot for the machine I didn't. at the time. Yes. Well, I think I probably had one and I thought that I, that I would, it would be easier with the digital dual feed. And I will say that I have better luck using the zipper foot than doing it without. So yes, like I said, old you, dogs, you new are, tricks. old dogs do tricks, but also I'm learning <laughs> as we go too. And the more I practice, the more I try things, the more I'm like, Oh, Oh, that was actually really good. Like that was better to do. Speaking of changing feet. Um, so for me, I, had tried the zipper foot on one fabric and it hadn't worked very well. So I just thought, okay, that won't work. Truth is it will work on a lot of the fabrics, but not the very thick ones. So if you're using a very thick one, I would really recommend that you didn't do a zipper anyway. So, um, what's, but... <laughs> thick, so what's thicker than this Lux Cuddle oh. Heather Quartz? I mean, there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch stuff, of them. Right? We'll, we'll talk a little bit at the end about okay. my experience sewing with the thicker fabrics with this project. Okay. So I've got it pinned on here. One of the things you want to be very aware of is that I've got metal bits there. Oh yeah. You don't want to sew okay. those. I don't that want to sew like those. sounds like broken needle land. Yeah. So I'm actually going to sew it from this side so that I can make sure and keep an eye on that. I'm going to go ahead and get my zipper pull out of the way too. Oh. So that creates less lump in there, which is better. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get in here. My needle down. Okay, and I've got a three, three point oh stitch length is what I'm doing. Just a straight stitch. Nope. Somehow got on some other stitch. Okay, there. Right. There. Yep. There. Okay, so half an inch. Let me grab my stiletto so I can keep this down. So where I'm going would perfectly land on my little metal bits there. So I'm gonna make sure I kind of steer around them. You do so want you to kind of go a... up to the outside of that little metal bit, right? Yeah, I want to make sure that my needle is not going to hit it. If it hits it, we're going to get broken needle land, and that's not fun. Well, it's, you know, not fun because then you have to replace your needle before you need it to. And the other is that it's actually really dangerous. Those needle bits will fly. Yeah, I'm not wearing safety goggles, Teresa. Can we? We will make sure it doesn't happen. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there I've got my little end bit sewn on. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Get some of my pins over here. And then again, I'm gonna make make it work. Right. And an end and an end. And again, I kind of pin those ends in at the 45 just to make it so that they're a little extra stable at the corners. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew this. So this one is far far enough away from the um that metal bit, but it's fine. Stay. I am going to take this off and just chop it right here because it has some of the tape on it, so it keeps sticking well, that, to that everything. Tape, doing doing tape stuff. It's doing tape stuff. <laughs> so we're just going to move it out of the way because otherwise it will drive me crazy. It's sticking to everything. All right, so let's sew this again. Okay, so as I sew this, I'm just creating a longer piece now for my zipper to go, and I can sew right over the zipper teeth. That's not a big deal. As long as they're a plastic zipper, you'll be all right. 
If you're using a metal zipper, make sure that you hand crank over that. Just found a pin that needs to get chucked. Sometimes pen, pins bend. Okay, make sure you throw them away. They're not that expensive. All right, so now I've got my long piece. This piece needs to be the same size as that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to figure out where I need to cut it. So there are some measurements you could do. It's not really how I roll, so I'm just going to cut it off. That's how you make your scissors not work, by trying to cut pins. Okay. Yeah, bad idea. Okay. <laughs> so now I've got my band for the back of it. Okay. So at this point in your pattern, it'll have told you to cut out the other pieces, which I have got. So I've got a side. I labeled it as my front. It's the other wide one. And then I've got another side. Okay, so this will be here. This one will be here. This is my back. The side and the side. So these all match the measurements. So whatever measurements you've got, this front band will be the same measurement as the width of your rectangle here. Does that make sense? It does. So this is as wide as that. This is as yep. wide as that. Cut those pieces. So you could make it any other depth. You could make it any other width. Whatever you want to do, just make sure your measurements actually work with what you've got here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we did our zipper, then we're going to actually put, put this into an entire band to go all the way around. These seams are going to help us guide it so that we can get it perfectly square. One of the things that we're going to do with this is we're going to do this funky little thing where we leave a half an inch to create kind of a Y seam at these corners so that they're really nice and sharp. So I'm going to show you how to do that with some other fabric before we do this one, just because it will be a little bit easier to see than this. So I'm going to put all of this up here for right now. And I'm going to grab this. So this is our little example. Okay. And I did this so that you guys can see what the heck I'm talking about. So this is kind of creating our band. So I've got two of the pieces here. This is my tiny little pet bed. <laughs> Here's our other piece. I want to make sure that my nap is going wrong. Now I want to make sure it's going right. That one was wrong. <laughs> so I want to make sure they're going right. Okay. Same same width. I'm going to fold this one over. Now in the pattern, they say to sew, they, we, I, say to start sewing a half an inch from the edge and then sew to a half an inch from the bottom. So for a while, I was just kind of looking at it and guesstimating where that was. And then I realized that wasn't the smartest thing to do because it wasn't always working. And that was really frustrating. So then I started marking it a half an inch from the edge and a half an inch from the edge and then sewing between those lines. Then I, it dawned on me, I'm just going to mark my sewing line. So this is my recommendation on how to do this part. I'm actually going to move it so it's one layer. I'm going to put my ruler on here so that it's the half inch line is a half an inch from the raw edge. Can, can we flip we, it? Can we flip it? There mm -hmm. we go. That's much nicer. Okay. So... I'm going to use my little stiletto here and show you. So there's the little half inch dotted line is right here. runs right along the edge of my raw fabric. I'm going to squish this up so that the inch lines are on either side. So I'm going to go a half an inch in. And I'm going to draw a line. And end a half an inch from the other end. Okay, so this is my start for my start and my stops. Okay, so that, so what I did is just draw my stitching line. And what I found when I did this, it is so much easier than trying to aim for a start and a stop. What is, what are you laughing I'm at? I'm laughing at Liz's comment. That is a bed for a guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> it is a small bed. It is definitely your, your chihuahuas, your shih tzus, your guinea pigs. Yeah. <laughs> You know, pets are pets. Maybe, That's maybe, right. maybe you have a cat that needs a, a a bed to sleep on. But 
easier for us to do the tutorial with, on a teeny tiny with one. a smaller size. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll get to the bigger size conversation. So sure. I pinned it over here so that I can easily see my stitching line. I pinned it outside of where I'm going to sew. So all of these places are pins that I don't actually have to take out. So I'm just going to sew from here to here, leave all my pins in place. And it means this stays really stable while I'm sewing it. All right. So again, making sure my stitches are all right. I'm going to go ahead. This is 3.0 stitch length, just a straight. I'm going to come in here and just put my needle down exactly where I want it to be. Oh, hand take my, I'm going to take that pin out because it worries me being back there. And I'm going to stitch forward two stitches, back two stitches. This is really because I feel like the zigzag is actually a little stronger than the lock stitch, and this part is going to get a little pulling. So I'm just going to follow that little line down until I get to the end of it. I'm going to do the same thing and do a little back stitch. Two stitches. Well, that one I did three. And then I'm just going to do it. One more. Okay. Cut my thread. And there we go. Look at how perfect that is. Okay. So now this is, this is great because what I have is exactly half an inch from this edge, exactly half an inch from here, and exactly half an inch here. So all my measurements should work out perfectly, we hope. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and show you how I do this. So we're going to pretend this, this is a circle, all right? And Which gonna, part's a circle? That there's Help actually a piece coming over here. Okay. We have a three-sided square. Okay. So I'm just going to start sewing over here. This is the example. This is the example. I'll show you on the real one in just a minute. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it so that my seam, this edge, goes all the way to that edge. So I want those to line up. So this is my base, okay? So this would be like the base of the dog bed or the top of the dog bed. This is the side. I want this corner and that corner to match. Okay. Okay, if there's questions, please ask, because I will, I will show you this again. We're gonna do it twice. That's why we have two corners. Okay, so now, I'm gonna get that over here and I'm gonna I'm we're gonna not actually out. gonna pull that seam out she was was wondering why you backstitched at the beginning and the end of this seam here because it needs to be secure and that actually does get to stay in there yes well, I, I'm pretty excited to see how this goes so okay so I'm double pinning here okay so I'm gonna sew right along this edge half inch seam allowance and what I'm gonna do is end at that dot if I did it right okay so when we're doing this, you're just going to start on a side. Pick a side, any side, and start there. And then we're going to sew all our way around. Okay, so like I said, yes, this one is just a demo. So I'm going to make sure that my edges are matching. That's a and great note aim. about re-watching while you sew. So the pattern on this is very lean. Like, like Ter Teresa and Rose and some of the other folks at Shannon Fabrics all worked together to create the pattern that yeah, you Yeah, Baxter. Rin right. Baxter is actually yeah. the one who originally came up with the idea, and then we just kind of tweaked it a little bit to work with this project. But w what I'd like to say is that, that there's not a ton of extra information in that physical pattern, but and it is designed to work with this tutorial. With the tutorial, exactly. So you can see I've sewn right up to that corner. Okay, now what I'm going to do is a little funky. We're going to take this. Do you want to move this over to the table? It'll be easier to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I've sewn up to that corner. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to twist it. And what happens is that can open up and make this next edge much easier to put in. So what kind of happens is kind of like when we're doing the mitered corners on the quilt. So when this comes over, this is a little bit, it came a little bit off, but these should basically match up on this next edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this edge of my band away to get it nice and flat, get this against the edge. And I'm going to pin this here because what I'm going to do is start sewing right there at the corner. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to come and make this come out flat and pin that in place. So I pin into 
the seam allowance mostly to hold it there so that I can make sure that this doesn't get folded underneath there. So that's why I'm pinning close up here too. So I want to make sure that it's it's going to stay where I want it to stay. Okay, so we're going to do this one more time, and then we'll do it on the big guy. Show you how it looks like on one side. Because you're going to do this eight times because there's four corners. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin one more time right in front of that seam. Mostly because this pin is going to have to come out and I don't want it to move. Okay, the reason I'm doing it on this little guy is so that I can show you and you can actually see better. You'll notice when it gets to the the Lux cuddle, it's just, you can see it okay when you're sewing it, but showing someone, it's really hard to, to tell. You'll see, you'll see in a minute when I do it on the big one. Okay, so I'm going to again back stitch up to that corner. Went from past. Okay, and I'm just going to sew along this edge. All the way down to the other corner. And we should, we're says aiming. She's about ready to upgrade Loki's bed. Oh, good. <laughs> and thanks for designing the pattern in the first place. She did this a couple of years ago for us for um, a special project that we had with a uh, panel. And then we don't make the panel anymore. So we're like, this is a great pattern. We need to, to redo it and make it just for Lux Cuddle. So that's what we did. Okay. So now, again, I've started basically at that corner. I sewed all the way down to the next seam allowance just there so I leave the seam allowances loose that's the key here and then when we do this oh wow we have a perfect little boxed corner that, isn't that nice can we can we do that again yeah we're gonna do it four more times on the next one so I'll Wait, show you, you again. It inside out again so we're gonna go so to the corner so to the corner in the pattern I will tell you in the pattern it looks like <laughs> see if I can lay this out like this is what it, how it's drawn in the pattern. So you'll be like, I don't understand what's happening. This is the picture that's in there. Okay. Got so really, it. you're sewing to a corner. So from the corner, Ta -da! pop that thing inside out. Okay. <laughs> if you were to do this, you could totally do this with cotton. This is just a Y seam and you would do it in cotton and quilting and all that sort of stuff too. In cotton, you would want to trim these out so that it would not be all this bulk in here. With the cuddle, it actually works out fine and kind of fills that corner. Okay. Beautiful, right? I'm really impressed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so impressed that I'm we're going to do it again. Maybe I'm easily impressed, but that maybe. was pretty great. So this is the one I already did before. I sewed the top on. I did the same way. Okay. Did that. Sewed the corners. Pop it inside out. There's my corner. And that so is why gonna... we nobody cares. Right, because you can't really... <laughs> with, with the Lux. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's why I showed you in a different color, because it's really hard to see. So we're going to do it again. We're going to do... So you would sew all of that on just like this. So you would sew it on to the top first. So I'm going to sew on to the bottom, but you're going to do it the same way for both of them. So you took all four of those pieces, including the zipper, and ba made a complete loop, Circle. which is the, the, the side of this. Exactly. All the way around. You're going to line up the corners, do this Y seam trick. So these are the sides. I sewed them together into a strip, and then I would sew it into a circle and then sew it on here. Okay. Okay. The only thing that's tricky about that, and it's not even tricky, is you have to make sure that the sides go onto the right side. The short side is not going to fit here. Just move it. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do the thing that I love to do, where we're going to pin corners first, because that's easier. So let's start with the front because we don't have to worry about the the um the zipper being in it right now so i'm going to just like we did on the other one i'm going to fold this out of the way and i'm going to pin this up at the corner i'm going to get that so that the other strip is not going to get sewn in and i'm going to pin it right in the seam allowance to hold it there and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do the same thing on this end. And again, I did all of those those edges just like that, where I marked the marked it and then I sewed it and left the half inch gap up at the top. And that half inch gap is what it let what lets it kind of do that really sharp corner that's so nice. Okay. So now I know this is my this is my width. I've got a corner and a corner pinned. Yep. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin the center. And then I'll start pinning more. Corey, I agree. I think that that whole, that whole corner was complete magic. <laughs> it is really lovely. Once you once you figure it out, you just get the nicest, sharpest corners, and it really isn't hard. I will say that the the one of the important parts is marking them very accurately, and then actually kind of putting your needle in at the right place, and then taking it out at the right place, and not not trying to go too fast or anything. So again, we're gonna just, you know pin in the middle, pin in between, pin in between some more, and then pin a second row. That would be All right, a, I'm in the way, double way more comfortable ter pinning territory with you now. This makes sense. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. The other one was weird. Yeah. <laughs> also, it looked like it worked. So It did. Great. Okay. So we're going to just go ahead and do all the double pinning here. So part of this, with when doing this, this is a widthwise piece, a cut. This one will stretch because it isn't backed with anything, and this one won't stretch because it's backed with the batting. So for me, it's extra important to do the double pinning when you're doing that sort of thing so that you can prevent this from stretching at all because it will want to move because the other one can't. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the little example, just in a way, I need to get the hand crank here. So I'm just putting it down where my seam ended before. I'm gonna stitch forward a little. And then I'll stitch backward a little. And again, this is like one of the, any of the projects that you would do for kids too, is all of these seams. If you have a, an active dog who wants to jump on this and slide, I would probably go around all these seams twice just to make sure that they are nice and secure. Or if, you know, the dog's a little bitey, chewy. Yeah, kind of like the stuffed animals. We often suggest going around the seams that are gonna get the most stress a couple of times to hold it. If your dog's just gonna laze on it, you're fine. Just do it once. All right. Okay. Make sure my fabric is staying where I want it to. Take that thing out. Okay, and this one, this seam isn't as important to make sure that it's perfectly a half an inch. Let's see if we can sneak by that pin in there. Yes. Okay, so the other seam that we were doing, it needed to be exactly half an inch so that it fits perfectly. This one we're not, how to be quite as perfect. I'm just going to aim for that end. So it's one of those things that I can see and you probably cannot. Okay, so I choose to do each side one at a time. I am a one side at a time kind of girl, and that's generally what I do for blankets, and I did it for this. Uh, you could pin the whole thing and try to do it at once, but for me, that sounds like frustration. It sounds stabby. It sounds stabby. I mean, that's how <laughs> I feel about the throws, too, but I do know people who mm. pin the entire thing first. So again, I'm going to get that corner to match up, where I want to make sure that it stays. I'm pinning the seam allowance so that it stays there. And then pin in between. All right, so this is where we get to do all the seams. So everybody has to come up with questions that you're gonna you're gonna ask. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... uh, why do you not uh, Why do you not back or face the side pieces? Um, it was just really to keep it sort of floppier, and it isn't it isn't as necessary because they're not going to get the wear that the top and the bottom do. That's really. Um, the reason we chose not to do that it just gives the the top and bottom have more wear and tear on them, and the sides want to be squishy. Yeah, and we also we also we're going to get to a bigger conversation about how to stuff these and why. And there mm -hmm. that brings up a great comment that I just saw go past mm -hmm. about waterproof things and, oh, and lining yes. things. Yeah. So and... we didn't we didn't talk about it yet, but here I'm gonna I'm gonna sew this, and you can you can show this. I'm gonna come okay. around you. Oh gosh. Okay, so you can show that. So that is, here. just just show it, and I'll talk <laughs> about it. So that is a product called Shield that's from Fairfield, who's also the people who did the stuffing that we're going to use today. And you probably know them from Polyfill. But they also do this project called, or product called Shield that is actually for that sort of thing. So if you want to use this, and here, let me open Make it. Make pillow mattresses. Let me open it, because it'll be easier to see. There's probably an easy open thing, but I don't believe in that. Okay, there. 
All right, let's see if I can get okay. a non-reflection. Let's read this together. Okay, so really it works to help. So you can do it with pillows to, you know, fight against different, like, dust, dust mites or something they call them. I don't know. Allergens. But it also protects it from liquids or, you know, excess dirt. So if you wanted to make it waterproof, which would not be a bad idea with a pet bed, you can absolutely do that. And just put that in, I would put that in behind the batting is what I would do so that it didn't get to the actual insert liner part. Got it. And okay. there, there's the other thing that we are going to get to talking about, which is that you actually also made a, a muslin version of this as an insert. Yes, but I made it much easier and I'll show you. Yeah. Show you how to do that. That, that's the thing. All these great questions are jumping us ahead. Right. <laughs> Dang it, you guys. <laughs> Stop getting ahead of me. Just kidding. I we, we went through all of this. It's so funny how many like kind of iterations we did this week of like, okay, what what if we did this? And what about that? And how about this? Okay, so it's coming along. I got two sides on. Now I'm gonna do the side with the zipper. It's gonna work the exact Speaking same way. Speaking of zippers, Lee, we're on it. Make sure that you took the basting stitches out of the zipper. Yeah, before, before you do you the, sew the last side shut. Yes. I take it out, <laughs> as you saw, I take it out immediately because I have definitely done that. That is your turning hole slash stuffing hole slash. Yes. And if you get to the point that you. Against the wall because you forgot to do it. Right. Because if you get to the point <laughs> that you have all of this done and then you can unzip this, but you still can't get out, it's really not fun. Oh yeah, you don't even find out that you did it wrong, or, or you did you forgot until to you do start it to try to turn you, it out, and, and then, then you can't. Oh. And then you're trying to take stitches out and okay. pull the zipper, and yeah, it's not as much fun. It sounds like she's done it too, so I feel like I'm she in good asked company. Us not to ask how she knows. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, well, Lee. my guess is that we're <laughs> we we've, we've played on that team together before. <laughs> Getting to the end, and you're like, oh, oh, kind of like when you forget to leave a turning gap. That happens too. Okay, so again, I'm just kind of, you know, pinning in between and then pinning in between and doing all that double pinning. And then just trying to make sure that when I pin this second section, that I'm just trying to keep those edges even. Because the reason we do this second pinning down here is that these areas don't really want to stay together. So I have to kind of keep them together and then I can stick a pin in down here and they will stay now. Okay, so important pinning techniques with cuddle. And I know that some people get frustrated because it's a lot of pinning, but it's a lot of not unsewing. And that's really what I'm trying to avoid is the unsewing. Okay, so when I get to this corner, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is all out of the way. So on the first part, when you saw me do the, the first section, that was easy to keep it out of the way. Here it's a little bit more because you've got the base and all this stuff. So I'm going to make sure give it a good tug, keep it out of the way. And then I am going to stick a pin. This is someplace you could absolutely use a clip too. The clips don't work quite as well with the digital dual feed because I have to take them out. I'm trying to see if mm -hmm. there's a good second version of this angle, but I don't know. Can you see where my needle is going down? Not, Not particularly. Really, no. Okay. Well, I'm just going to hand crank it down because I want to be exact about where it goes. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm stitch forward and stitch backward. And then I'm just going to stitch along this edge, shooting for about and, a half an inch. Hey, Missy, welcome. And I think that um, making one for a larger dog, you're going to see that here at the end. And uh, the crib mattress uh, is a great thing. And we have another product we're going to show you that might uh, make, make more sense. Depends on how big your dog is. Yes. If you have a great Dane, yeah, sure. Maybe the, maybe the crib mattress is <laughs> It right might enough. be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> It might be perfect. Yeah, there are definitely some big dogs out there. Who needs who needs a cuddle twin mattress cover? Who's got the big dogs in the room? Oh, well, we, we have to the that big too. Dogs. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because the um, we didn't realize. I don't know. I guess I didn't realize how many people have big dogs. So we thought the neighbor had a a dog that would fit the bed, and turns out it's a big dog and needs the big bed. So. We had to, we have to make a new one. Okay, so this is the last side. I'm gonna go ahead and pin that. Sorry about that. I'm sure I get my pins over here. All right, and I'm gonna pull this again, tucking that out of the way, making sure that I'm not catching anything. 
it's not the worst if you do, but it means on sewing, and I don't like to do that. So try to avoid it. Okay, so if these are all cut correctly, they'll match. The joy of cuddle is that you're going to be able to uh, hide it if it does. So this is something that wants to happen. See how this curled in like this? So if it curls in like this, it's more likely to get caught over here. So I have to make sure that it's pulled out. Okay, so this little side panel needs to make sure that it's, it's tugged out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do all of this pinning again. And again, just kind of shoving things to where I want them, putting the pin in. So I kind of push it back. Because what it wants to do is come up. They want to be uneven. That's just what it does. So I kind of have to force it into position, stick a pin in it. And do the same thing over here. And you see, it's not, I mean, I guess it's a lot of pins. I was going to say, it's not a lot of pins, but I've just pinned more. That's all. I definitely pinned more than this on things. I'm like, okay, nothing is going to budge ever. All right, so we're going to do the last edge. I'm going to get that in there. Get my pin out. Use the hand crank, put it down where I want it to. One of the things, too, is that when you are doing this, you can kind of feel if you've caught too much at that point because it'll be extra thick and, like, harder to get through. And then you're like, oh, maybe I caught more of the seam allowance than I should have. And you can fix that before you get going too much. Okay. I'm just going to work our way along this. And I'm not really pulling, but if you can see my hand back here, I'm just trying to keep these nice and um, straight because these are going to work differently because one is batted and one is not. They're going to feed through a little bit differently, so I just need to make sure that the top is, is staying flat so it will kind of ease its way across here and not get all bunched up on me. So again, aiming for that corner. Backstitch. Okay, so technically you could then just come to this corner, kind of pop up, stitch the next side, but that's not really oh, how I roll. I can't Sorry, see like, that way. yeah, nope. but you, you could stitch here and then stitch here. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Jason, so you, you could stitch and then turn it and stitch right away, like you could pin all this. But for me, this is really, it's much easier to do one side at a time and really kind of nail those corners the way I want to. Okay, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to make sure that I caught all my pins. This is thin enough that it is fine. I give it a little squeeze. One of the other ones we'll talk about in a minute was um, thick enough that I actually turned it and still had five pins left in it. So be Which careful. Which was not fun to figure out. No, not at all. Okay, let me clean up my pins really quick here. Well, what's that crazy thing? It's a zircle. The <laughs> only thing I can tell you is be careful with it because pins will stick to the bottom and then sometimes they'll stab you because they stick off like that. Got it. But so, other than that, it's other than really, that, I love it because yeah. it just picks up all the pins. It's awesome. Okay, so now I just unzipped the zipper all the way. There's my lovely corner, which <laughs> this is a lot easier to see what's happening. <laughs> but that's what that is right there. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Got it. We're gonna go ahead. Thanks for thanks for working that out for us. Turn this whole thing. I'm just gonna make sure and pop my corners out as much as I can. Any of these areas where the fabric is kind of tucked in there into the into the seam. Just going to go ahead and use my by Annie stiletto and fluff that out. That is includes all of this up here along that top edge. Just going to go ahead and fluff it up. And that pulls those extra fibers Oops. out of the stitch, but it doesn't loosen up the seam at all. No, really. not at all. It's just pulling the the fibers that are caught in the seam out of there. So that's something you can kind of do as you go right at the end. Pull all these corners out. So there's another one. It's really just sort of satisfying when you can't see those seams anymore. They just hide in there. Okay, just goes away. I love that. All right. Let me see. All the corners popped out. Yes. All right. And now we have a dog bed. 
Okay, so at this point, you can stuff it. And we have a couple of different things we wanted to talk about. You can come around to the front and we'll talk about the stuffing of it. Okay, so originally we were like, you could just stuff the bed until it closed. And then we realized that if you just stuff the bed until it closed, you can't ever wash it again, really, because they're too big. Um, the small one is different. It's small. But like, really, these, this is the size that's in the pattern. And it's, it's much too large for your washing machine. With Especially the stuffing. when it's stuff <laughs> so, like that. And I think yes. maybe we overstuffed that one a little. I think the level of stuffing might be very. It would vary. Yeah, but it's still, on, it's. You know your dog. It's a lot. So we wanted to make it so that you could actually wash it. And you could take that lining out. So there's a couple of ways you could do it. If you wanted to, you could totally just stuff it. And then take the stuffing out later. Restuff it. Um, all of that. Fine. Um, or you can make a little muslin that will fit inside so what i did with this one is i sewed two squares together that were two inches bigger than my top on the side on like the two measurements so if it was 20 by 18 i made it 20 by 22. does that make sense you took two pieces and you just sewed them together like a pillowcase just like a pillowcase i left a turning gap i boxed the corners okay we'll end up doing some tutorial about this but if you look on youtube how to box a corner that's all i did okay okay so that i made it a three inch high corner also got it. it's like a faux band across here yes got it exactly so it doesn't have as nice of a shape in my opinion but it doesn't really need it because but it's it doesn't need it because it's exactly so got we're gonna stick it, it in here so now we're just and then i just i sewed it shut i stuffed it sewed it shut with a straight seam okay so now we're just going to stuff this in here Make sure it, you know, mostly fits. And then probably give this to my friend Jamie's little Pablo dog, which is, what is Pablo? Is he like Chihuahua and... And Wolf. Papa I don't Pat. know what he is. He's, 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 he's it's mean. It's a little he's French a dog that has, dog. has the cute little ears. Oh, he's almost like a Doberman. But he's like, like a tiny dog. Yeah, I mean, he's the, <laughs> the miniest of pins. Okay, so I'm just trying to squish the stuff out to the to the corners is what I'm doing. It's not anything that you could possibly see except that I'm doing it. Okay, ta-da. We absolutely happened. did use old bed pillow stuffing and recycled it. That yes. absolutely was something that we chose to do as well. Um, yep. As opposed to buying the five-pound box of okay. polyfill yes. that's hiding in the corner. Yeah, we'll get to it in just a second. <laughs> okay. Know. So, and I could go ahead and kind of pull these corners out. And again, I'm, you know, I'll get kind of crazy about making sure that all this is pulled out because it would just look so much nicer. All right. So you're going to go ahead, stick that in there, zip it shut, give it to your dog, your cat, your gerbil, whatever you got. They're going to love it. Okay. Nice and squishy, which is kind of what we want. All right. Um, we did talk about doing foam with this originally, and then we realized that that probably wasn't the best idea. Um, are we still okay? The TV yeah. just went black. Okay. Um, That's yeah. I have no idea. Oh, okay. It's... That's okay. I just want to make sure, like, are we still alive? is now not operating. Okay. So we did it also. <laughs> this is uh, Lux Cuddle Frosted Baby Seal Chocolate Almond. You could do it in, which was nice. It's a bit thicker. I this is crazy. I love that it gets darker down under here. The funny story about this fabric is discontinued. Well, that's not, isn't it? The, well, this one is the uh, this is one that's discontinued, but the Lux Cuddle Frosted Baby Seal is exactly like this, oh. a little bit longer. Oh, okay, got it. But looks exactly the same. Got it. Yeah, it's just a little bit longer. So this is another fabric that we used. Okay, so this one is the Lux Cuddle Arctic Rabbit. Fox. Now I got Fox. I was like, I don't remember yeah, which one it is. Little Arctic Fox Black Coffee. Black Coffee. So this is also one of those that has um, kind of two colors going in it. So this was my original idea for doing this one was to do the pet bed out of this. So I did it first. This is the one that I lost all the pins in. Okay. And I will also say that this one is a little bit more to sew. All right. And partly because it's such a thick, thick fabric. So I wanted to share it with you just a little bit. Um, and we'll finish up the stuffing talk. Uh, so this is it. Look how long this. I'm going to come around and we're going to do the whole thing over here in case okay. we want to use this little clip. But I really want to show you guys. Look how thick that fabric is. It is 
insane. Okay. That's a whole thing. It's like an inch. It yeah. really is like an inch tall. So it is really thick and it's really dense. So this stuff is just, I mean, it is incredibly luxurious feeling. Like I can't even <laughs> get. Linda says we should call that grizzly bear. Yeah. I think you're, I, I think, think you might be right. Maybe you're right. What I love about this is, I mean, even if I like turn it and I try to get, you can't see the backing in here at all because it is just super dense. It's, amazing it is different than pretty much anything i've worked with which is why i kind of wanted to work with it so one of the things i realized about it is that denseness makes it a little bit more to sew <clears throat> so the me. two things i want to show you is how to cut it because that is a little different so you can absolutely do this you can see i did a dog bed out of it and it worked so i'm gonna and you're gonna have to know some stuff you're gonna have to know some stuff Exactly. And I think this would make a beautiful coat. It makes beautiful um, pillows. So if you want to do a pillow like this for yourself, you could. So this stuff is great because we're going to use the little scissors. And what is amazing is if you just come underneath here, just under the, the very edge of it, which is really easy to tell because it's so thick. So you just come under the backing, which a little snip. Okay, so tiny little bits. Now watch this when I pull it apart. It's so crazy. Whoa. Okay? So it ends up being really virtually no mess. If I come along here, I can pull some of this out, which is what I would do and what I did with the other one when I was sewing it, is to just make sure I could pull out any of that stuff. You do not want to cut this with a rotary cutter. <laughs> I believe I'm you. just going to say, this will be a mess. Okay? So make sure that you're using the scissors. But look how easy that was to cut apart. And to like not have a big mess with it. So the the tougher part comes here when you can see how far apart those backings are. So with the, it being so thick, this is where it becomes a lot more that you're going to have to sew. So use your clover, the, the heavyweight pins, and pin a bunch. Okay, so this was definitely one where I kind of tried to tuck it in. Mostly because it's a lot to, to, to look at. <laughs> that sounds bad, but like it's just a lot, like visually. So trying to keep it tucked in a little bit was helpful. So this, when I sewed this one with the bed, I definitely made sure to do a lot of pinning because there is no way to get this under my machine without really trying to smash it as flat as possible would this be a place where just like the top of the pet bed you could have you could pre-surge or pre-zigzag this edge and maybe help hold it flat? no because it it would only hold down this tiny little bit it's not going to hold down what you're actually sewing which is a half an inch in oh that makes sense got it yeah there we go so i'm going to just do a ton of pins so this one i was talking earlier about i've definitely pinned more when i was sewing this this was definitely one that i pinned a lot more because you can see how we got these close, but they still don't actually touch the backings. Because <laughs> there's still there's too much. We can't actually hold that close enough. But when you look over on this side and I put them that's, together, I mean, it's that's crazy. That's some crazy right there. Okay, <laughs> so I just want to show you just a little bit about how I learned to sew with this and why I decided to show it to the masses with a little bit easier fabric. Because it is so so one you can't just shove it under your foot. So you got to kind of swoop it under there, smash it down, get it under the foot. Okay. Now I can put my foot down and I have to make this a bigger stitch because it can't feed through. So now um, we're up to a four on a straight stitch. Did you do anything else to the presser foot pressure? I did not. I'll show you one of the changes that I've made on my machine just overall. Okay, so now it will kind of, it'll plow through it, but it was, it's definitely one where you really want to take your time with it and not, um, not try to force it. But you also can't just let it sit there and spin its wheel, the machine can't just spin its wheels in one place either. You right. You do have to, you do have to kind of guide it. So in here, if you look, you can't even really see those stitches are really where, much where more. We've talked about this before. I'll talk about it again in just a second. But they really are. They're so small. It's more like a 2.5, even though it's at a 4. So they are really little stitches, and they really sink in there because of the fabric being so thick. 
So one thing I wanted to show you really quick is on this side, even though you can't really see it super well, you can see my stitching. It looks pretty darn straight. One of the things that happens when you're sewing with cuddle because it's a knit fabric is you end up with places like this. So it'll look like you really got wonky. But on this side, you're perfectly straight. And it's just because of the knit fabric. Okay. So when yours looks like this, who cares? Look at it, it's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. So don't wow. panic about it. That's my point. Don't panic about it. It's fine. All right. And at this point, you could go in and you could scrush up your your seams with a stiletto and get this to kind of blend in a little bit. But that's my my tips on that. The other thing, because this is more like a faux fur, it's it's actually Lux Cuddle. So it is not a faux fur. Let me reiterate, it is not a faux fur. But it is it acts more so like it because it's such a longer, thicker nap. I've never and seen really you wonderful. scratch out the back of a seam. Before. No, because what happens, this is so <laughs> long, is that it ends up being little bitty bits in the front and will actually make your seam allowance look worse from the front. All right. So even just that actually helped. Yeah. So this is one of those fabrics that you could like trim down your seam allowance before you sewed with it. Um, it's it's a lot, but isn't it pretty? That's a faux fur technique, right? Is it's to, a faux fur to, technique. To kind of shave the fuzz off of the, the backing. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So let's show the um the options for okay, your around. stuffing. Okay. So in this, the little one that we just did, then I did, I just made a little muslin sack basically and stuffed it sewed it shut, and then use that as my insert. So that one I could take out, throw the pet bed in the wash, let it wash up and put that right back in. You could probably wash that separately. If you use that shield stuff, it will keep it much more protected. You could also remake them very easily because it was just a tiny bit of fabric, okay? If you wanna make the bigger ones, this is a product from Fairfield World that is the polyfill pet bed insert. And this is four pets up to 40 pounds and it makes a 20, or it's a it is a 24 by 36 yep which is what the size is that we included on the pattern and it's about four inches it's about four inches thick so it worked out really really well we tried it you could see on the cover of the pattern it worked out fine okay the dog loved it the other thing that they have as an option is the polyfill that's dark so if you were doing a darker pet bed and you wanted to just stuff it this would be a great one because you won't be able to see it ever through the thing um through the thing through the fabric Okay, so they do have this stuff. I think this works better when you're working with cotton fabrics and you don't want the white batting to show through the dark fabrics. So this is the dark filling would work, but it would also work for this uh, in this circumstance. And then we did, we have the big five pound box of polyfill. So we have talked before, whenever I do stuffed things, I almost always use the silky polyfill. And I love it because it's just squishy and yummy and perfect for stuffed animals. But what I found is that it was perfectly squishy for stuffed animals that you wanted to squeeze. But for the pet bed, we needed something that was a little bit denser that, that wouldn't smash down quite so much. Okay, so that's why we use the polyfill, um, just the regular stuff. And then we make that little sack. The batting in the fabric also makes it less lumpy. So I don't know if you can. Oh, right. Because because you have the batting on the front surface, if the filling is a little lumpy, you can't it tell. sort of evens it out. It does. Exactly. So if I pull this out, again, you can kind of see that it's not perfectly smooth. It's, it's a little lumpy because that's what it does. So it makes it. Yeah, it's a little lumpy. But once you stick it in there, it's totally fine. But it does have more. Uh, staying powder, powder, power that I can look, I can push down on it and I'm not going to hit the cutting mat where like if I were using the silky, I would just be like, and it would be done. So yeah, it's kind you of, go all the way I love the, the silky. It's more totally. Maybe more resilient or something. There's a, I'm sure there's a great resilient might be the right word for it. Yeah. So let me stuff this back in here. All right. So the pattern for the small one is what I just showed you. So this is the size for that. The uh, this is the medium size, and then the large one is about 24 by 36. So really, depending on what your dog, the size of your dog, and what your dog wants, maybe it's a little princess and it needs a really big bed, and you could do that too. Um, so there's no defining what size you make for your for your pet or what pet you make it for. Uh, are there any other questions that we need to answer on there? If we have to go bigger, one mm -hmm. of the things is basically figure out how big you need it. Pay attention to your seam allowances. They're all going to be half an inch. Yep. And they make a great sleeping bag zipper. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that you could use. We use that for, in a big, for, big one. For the inside if you yeah. need to. Yes. For the big one. Exactly. So whatever size you have, you want to make sure that your, your bands match those measurements. 
And then it's pretty easy to go from there. So we do give you some other measurements in the pattern, but you're welcome to, you know, get creative, do what you will. All right. Okay. Anything else we need to tell them? I think we got through everything that I wanted I to there. tell you guys. So that's great. All right. So hopefully we can get a winner. We'll announce that. There we go. We, we have, oh, hey, Helen Powers on YouTube Yay. and Joni and Lori Boyd, uh, John and, and Lori Boyd on Facebook. Great. I Congratulations. recognize those names. Congratulations, y'all. Yay. That's wonderful. So if you will email us, so email info at shannonfabrics.com and send us your mailing address, your phone number. Course, your email should be there hey email. for the record that day that's a daytime phone number and okay. that's for the shipping they they yes. really do need that so we if won't you can add a you. daytime a daytime phone number in that information yeah that'd be great thank yeah. you so much yeah we need it for shipping so otherwise you'll email i have to that, bug you again right if you'll email that to us that'll be really helpful we will get those um gifts sent out to you with the tote bag the mug and a kit which will be awesome so thank you very much for sharing it i really appreciate you everyone who shares the video and who spends Tuesday day with us. So I really do appreciate you all very much. We'll be back next week. We're going to be doing the lullaby next week, which is a kit. It's a type of quilt kit that we have, but you don't actually have to buy a kit to make it. So we're going to show you how to make your very own lullaby with your choice of fabric. So that'll be really exciting. I am looking forward to that. And that one has two options. And we're going to show you how to do a quilt, a cuddle quilt, without batting. So I know that's a question that gets asked all the time. Do you have to use batting? So in the other tutorials that we've done online so far, I've always used batting and next week we're not going to. So I'm going to show you that. And we'll talk about how to put them together and how to choose fabrics and all that good stuff. So hopefully you can join us then next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. here in Kansas City. Anna, until then, right? Until then, happy, happy sewing. sewing. <laughs>